Did I start? Okay. Today, I'm going to talking about how to contribute or how to contribute Kotlin. Before I'm giving a talk, I want to introduce myself. My name is Yoshi, or my GitHub account name is Shiraji. I have been contributing Kotlin since July 2016. I really love Kotlin, and I already made uh, 50 commits by now. And I also love my beautiful wife and <laughs> lovely son. <laughs> I work for Essex and Fitness Keeper, or Lung Keeper, which has office in US, uh, Europe, or Asia. So if you want to work with me, you can feel free to contact me after this talk, or during the party, or you can send me a pull request. <laughs> OK. So let's start the presentation. I have questions for you guys. Can you use get? Yeah? Good, 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 good. Good start. Do you have a GitHub account? Of course. <laughs> and can you write Kotlin? This is maybe a difficult question. <laughs> That's why you guys are here. Good. The reason why I ask these questions is the purpose of this talk. It's someone who said yes to these questions, become a contributor of Kotlin. Woo! <laughs> because Kotlin uses Git, and the repository is in GitHub, and Kotlin is written in Kotlin. <laughs> well, all the part is to Java, but I could say that. <laughs> and one thing you must know is Kotlin project consists a lot of features. For instance, Kotlin language, of course, Kotlin JS, or Kotlin plugins, or some kind of Android-related project. And the most external contributors, like me, mainly working on Kotlin plugin. So this talk is focusing on how to contribute Kotlin plugin. However, once you understand how to contribute Kotlin plugin, you are able to contribute Kotlin languages, or Kotlin JS, or anything, because there is only one repository called Kotlin. OK, finally, here's the outline. Set up, communicating with others, and developing or testing Kotlin plugin future. OK, set up. You know what? This is hardest part. This is hardest part. So please, I'm begging you, please don't give up here. Please. <laughs> there are five parts of setup. The first setup is JDK. Kotlin requires JDK 1.8 and JDK 1.7 and <laughs> JDK 1.6. Yes, you need to install three different versions of JDKs. And if you take a closely, if you take a look at the code closely, there is options, option settings for JDK 9. So in near future, there will be four JDKs. According to the documentation, we need to have these environment variables. And it's kind of hard to set up, right? So here's what I did. I used Java home command and hyphen V option to specify which version is uh, for the each environment variables. And you can copy paste from the, this URL. Um, don't worry, I'm going to post my slide after, afterward. So JDK is done. Next one. The next setting is ant. Ant. <laughs> Kotlin is ant to build. <laughs> ant version must be higher than 1.9.4. And if you use Mac OS, run blue command, blue install ant. And in most cases, you need a memory setting. Add ant opt environment variables with 
lots of new, uh, lots of memory settings like this. And I'm hoping there is no Gradle guy here in this room. <laughs> the third one is downloading dependencies. Ant hyphen f, ant hyphen f, update underscore up dependency dot xml will set up and download all dependencies. It took me 50 minutes to complete. And I really don't recommend to use Wi-Fi if, because if you lost the connection, you have to learn this again. <laughs> and make sure your machine don't go to sleep. Because, like, imagine, like, after, spend, after spending 30 minutes, and your machine goes to sleep, and you lost the connection, and it happens to me a lot. And so make sure you keep touching the mouse pad like this. <laughs> Every one minute, right? OK, the fourth one. Uh, is IDE and its plugins. IntelliJ IDE A 2017.3 or higher is required to open the Kotlin project. Both community and ultimate version works fine. I use both of them. For Gradle plugin setting, to run test easily, select delegate IDE, build slash run actions to Gradle options. And for Kotlin plugin, the version must be higher than 1.1.50 from September. From September, it is rec recommended to use the up-to-date stable version of Kotlin plugins. And to make sure you use up-to-date Kotlin plugin version, go to Tools, Kotlin, Configure Kotlin plugin updates, and click Check for Updates Now button. Well, it's quite hard from, from slide. You, you can't see the, uh, how to. You can see the, how to check the update, right? Up to date, Kotlin plugin. So I brought the movie to illustrate making sure you are using up to date Kotlin plugin version. Here we go. Go to Tools and go to Kotlin. Select Configure Kotlin plugin updates. And check for update now button is here. And make sure you use stable channel for stable version. And let's hit this button. And if there is a version available, install button shows up. So hit this button. And if you are using a stable, but uh, up-to-date Kotlin plugin version, the message say you are using up-to-date plugin version or something. Good. So IDE and plugin setting is done. The last one. It's Mojo. Last one, guys. After you install up-to-date Kotlin plugin version, you are able to open Kotlin project. However, first time you open the Kotlin project, there is no Mojo, no source code. To fix this problem, go to File, New, Mojo from existing sources, and build.gradle.kts. And after that, Gradle import dialog is popping up, so select Use Default Gradle Lapper. OK, I put the instruction in slide. It still doesn't make sense to me, <laughs> right? So I brought another movie here. Open Kotlin project. Open that, and there is no module. These files are uh, setting files. So let's open the Kotlin module. File, new or maybe jump to the module from existing sources. And select build.gradle.kts file. That's a lot of file. And import module from Gradle dialog is popping up. So select use default Gradle wrapper. And hit OK. And immediately, the Kotlin module was showing up, also as a source code inside the Kotlin module. Done for the module setting. Now, everything is set, so let's run the project. Select IDEA. And hit run button. 
and wait for a few seconds to the child IDEA shows up. What does this do is if you change code or a Kotlin, Kotlin project code, or if you change parent IDE's code, the change is bundled to child IDEA. Isn't that cool? Like if you create a new Kotlin future, you are the first one who use the future. Isn't that cool? I did a lot of it. <laughs> okay, to sum up, as for setup, this is hard, hardest part. Don't give up here. Please don't give up. You need to set up JDK, three versions, and 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 IDEA and its plugins. And if you have a problem, ask other contributors or JetBrain staff. How? Let's talk about that in next topic. Communicating with other developers. We mainly use three tools for communication. Let's talk about the use case of these tools. The first one is Slack. I believe most of people in here use public channel called Kotlin, a uh, public team called Kotlin Lang. Uh, you guys are using that? Yeah. No one? Good, okay. <laughs> if you are not, then get the invitation from this URL. There is contributors channel. This is the one that most of contributors and JetBrains staff are staying. So if you have a problem building a Kotlin project or uh, hmm, anything, anything that you are related to the contribution, you can ask that question at this channel. And in most time, you can get the answer within one business day. <laughs> yeah, one business day. The second one is Utrack. Do you guys know what Utrack is? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's what I'm expecting because JetBrain, this is just JetBrain stuff, a JetBrain product, and you guys love JetBrain products, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Utrack is an issue management tool that JetBrains developed. This screenshot is a Utrack, and if you go to this URL, you can see the Kotlin's public issue that are listed. You can work any issue if there is no assignee. You can do that right now. And if you have no idea which issue you can work with, then check for app for grab stack. These issues are free to contribute. And if you find the issue that you want to work with, then comment, I'm going to do this. Since we are external contributors, JetBrain staff won't be able to assign me or assign you guys to assign me. But if you comment, I'm going to do this, then issue is yours. You are treated as assignee. Good. The last one is GitHub. GitHub is basically where JetBrain staff give us a feedback of your pull request. Not much communication happens here, except keep. I'm not going to talk about the keep. If you guys don't, understand, I don't know what keep is, then Google keep space Kotlin. You can find it. And as far as I know, you should not send pull requests with new features without creating an issue in Utrack. The small documentation change or adding a command can be merged without the issue, but not new features. And if you're not sure, you can send a pull request, or if you're not sure, you can create an uh, issue in Utrack, then ask question in Slack. After sending pull request, you should comment pull request URL in Utrack's issue. This is because, this is because JetBrains staff don't look at GitHub. They are constantly checking at Utrack, but not GitHub. Can you believe that? <laughs> So uh, then, uh, after that, uh, if you, uh, after that you, com you should comment the URL to the Utrax issue, because uh, the issue goes to the top of the list, and JetBrains staff easily to find uh, the, the issue has uh, some kind of progress, and then they find their, their, their pull request, so they can go to the code review. And you need to do that. Okay. 
So to conclude the communication part, ask a question in Slack, talk about issue in Utrack, and send a pull request in GitHub. OK, so I gave you all information that is required to contribution. Are you ready to contribute? Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, 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 good, good. <laughs> OK, well, let's create a Kotlin flag in futures. There are many, I mean, many futures that you, you, we can work with. One of frequently asked future, FAF, is inspection. According to JetBrains documentation, code inspection detects compiler and runtime errors, suggests corrections and improvement before you even compile. For instance, this is an, ins this is an inspection that I contributed before, remove redundant spread operator inspection. This inspection report asterisk and interlay of method call is useless when the parameter is bar arg. You can just call foo one, two, three instead of calling foo asterisk into array of one, two, three. Do you guys follow that? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, I made a movie for this one, but this is really quick, so you should, you should not blink. <laughs> okay, let's go. When the pointer goes to the code, the alert is showing up, and hit Alt Enter, and select the inspection, the code is gone. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the inspection. So let's create this future. Here is a list of the file you need to implement, or you need to write when you create a new inspection, where XXX is an inspection name. In this sample, remove redundant spread operator is the XXX part. The first file is implementing inspection. To implement the inspection class, first thing you need to do is find out which expression class is used for syntax. It's impossible to identify it by just looking at the code. It's impossible to just guess the code, guess from the code. And so use PSI Viewer, which is bundled in child IDE. IDE. PSI Viewer is a tool that identifies the structure of the code. You can go to Tools and click View PSI Structure of Current File. Let's see the movie. And this is a child IDEA. And this is a sample code for the inspection. And this is what we are looking for the expression. OK, let's open the PSI Viewer. Go to Tools. Hmm? Tools. And View PSI Structure of Current File. And the PSI Viewer is popping up. And the code from Child IDEA showing up here. And the, imp the important part is here, PSI Structure. We're going to get the result of the ex ex expression class in here. So let's highlight what we are looking for. There you go. Um, KT value argument is what we are looking for. So we're going to create an inspections for KT value argument. Good. We found it. Uh, but one thing you have to remember is this one, it's also KT value argument. So we're going to create an inspection for KT value argument, which starts with asterisk and followed by some kind of array of method call. So let's implement the inspection class. First, create a class that inherits abstract Kotlin inspection file, uh, inspection class. Override build visitor method. Build visitor returns PSI element visitor class. PSI element visitor is a visitor which can be used to visit elements. IntelliJ inspection uses PSI element visitor for any languages like Java, Python, or XML. 
We use KT Visitor, which is a Kotlin version of Visitor class. The Visitor class has a method called Visit Argument that has KT value argument as a parameter. So whenever the in IntelliJ ID is inspection, visit the KT value argument, IDE calls registered inspection that implement visit argument method. And in this inspection, I use KT visitor void class that all visitor method returns void. Void. Why void? This is because KT visitor void is written in Java. <laughs> so going back to the code, returns KT visitor void. As I said before, I override visit argument method for KT value argument. I also add a print line for hello world. I, just, I can't just keep going, but I want to make sure the inspection is used. So let's go to the next step first. In order to register the inspection, we will add local inspection tag to plugin.xml file. Local inspection tag is something like this. As of implementation class, the value is fully qualified class name of the inspection class. So we registered it, uh, remove redundant split operator inspection here. And other settings like uh, enable by default true, of course, level is warning, and language is, of course, coding. So let's debug it. Use IDE LAN configuration and hit la uh, debug button. And I'm going to waste you guys 10 seconds of your life. The child ID yes, pops up. And I, I create a Kotlin test project. That is just empty project that I created. And you have to create project for uh, child ID EA. And there's no code here. Uh, let's clean up the console first. And going back to the child ID EA and paste the code. I'm expecting there is hello world in console. There you go. Hello world to one, two, three, and asterisk interlay of method call. There you go. Good. Uh, since I'm using a debug, let's test breakpoint. Add a breakpoint here. Can you guys see the pointer? Okay. Okay. Good. And clean the code, paste the code, and breakpoint works. Good. Let's see the variables. Let's see uh, what's happened for the argument.text. Argument.text. And I have to apologize here, because my machine was really lost back, and it's taking a really long time to collecting uh, data. Uh, so if you if you're free to donate me to the Mac, Mac machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see, here, here we go. One, we can fit the resume. Two, three, and asterisk interlay of method call, which is what we are looking for. Good, so debugging works as the same as normal project. So now let's finish up the inspections. This is what we already had before. Find out there is asterisk in the argument. Check if the method call is array of method call. Register the quick fix of the inspection and report it. Done. Easy, right? <laughs> <laughs> so next one is adding a description file. Create an HTML file that explains the inspection. Don't forget, the inspection's main functionality is reporting, not quick fix. If you said the inspection remove redundant spread operator, your code reviewer say, no, this is inspection. This inspection report the remove redundant spread operator for array of method call. This is what I got for the code review of this <laughs> inspection. So you should remember that inspection's main functionality is reporting. 
The last files are test data. Adding the test data has multiple steps. First, create the folder in inspection's local directory. Add .inspection file in the directory that we created. The content of .inspection file is fully qualified class name of inspection. And then create a, uh, add test data files. As you may notice that I keep saying I, uh, we're going to create test data, data, data. This is because it's similar to making a coffee. If you prepare coffee bean and hit start button of the coffee machine, coffee is automatically generated, right? Testing inspection is something like this. If you prepare test data, then you can hit generate, run, uh, generate test run configuration, and then the test case, test case are automatically generated. So we will only focusing on creating test data, but make sure you need to commit test case. Adding test data means you will provide one or two files in each test case. First one is .kt file that will test inspection is triggered or not. The second one is .after file. The file name must be correspond with the first one. And the content of the file is the result after applying in the inspection's quick fix. And now the test data is, the test data is ready. Let's create a test case. We will generate test case by running generate test run configuration. Generate test runs Gradle command, this one. I'm not going to say that. This command generates a class that has postfix with generated. And don't touch this, this class, because uh, JetBrain staff expect generate or test generate some kind of generated class, not human beings. So after generating test case, you can run the test case hitting run button beside the source code. And if you set up correctly, it will run as a Gradle command. If you don't, then make sure you select delegate IDE build slash run actions to Gradle options. And this may be described how to add test data, generate a test case, and how to run test case. This will be long. There is a remove redundant spread operator folder that I created. And dot inspection file, the content of the file is fully qualified class name of the inspection. And basic.kt file is a sample code for inspection or testing code for the inspection. There is kind of small, but the caret tag. There we go. This represents the cursor of the eater. And you need to put this one. And dot after file is the result of applying a quick fix of the inspections. So now we are ready for the test data. So let's create a, uh, let's generate a test case. In order to generate a test case, we will select generate test run configuration. Pointer, move. <laughs> there we go. Select to generate test and hit run button. And since it's taking really long time, so I'm going to describe other stuff. I create a test of data in inspection's local directory. But there is folder for inspections in the same directory. Don't put any data or any source code in this folder, because inspections is all the way, uh, all the way to test the inspection. Create a test of data in inspection's local directory. OK, so generate a test run configuration prompt what they generate. So let's open the local inspection, local inspection test generated file. Let's open that. And since it's small, so let's maximize the editor. 
There is a test case for remove redundant spread operator. This is just generated. And there is a test method for basic.kt. Here we go. And in order to run test this test case, hit run button. This is the one. And wait for 20 seconds. Let me drink my water. Taking a long time. <laughs> there you go. The test passed. So uh, this is just one test case or test data. And you need, in order to merge your commit, you have to add a lot of test data here, maybe, maybe 10 or something. OK. Actually, I haven't explained this one. Uh, there are many, many test data options, test data options. For instance, when we need to have runtime dependency, add with runtime command top of the test data file. And since I said there are many, many test data options, you are expecting a, a documentation, right? Yeah? There is documentation in abstract inspection test or Kotlin light code inside fixture test case, which is written in your favorite language, Kotlin. So everything is done. Cool. Let's send a pull request. The documentation required us that the commit command has issue number. So if you're working on KT-123, then the commit command has sharp KT-123 space fixed with other descriptive commit command. And you must send a pull request to master branch. Now after sending a pull request, you should comment your URL to Utrack, as I said before. And well, JetBrains staff are really, really busy, so just wait. Wait. And if they, are, they have no response within like three business days, maybe you should ask what's going on in Slack. And if you successfully merge at least one commit, your, command, uh, your name will be listed in Kotlin official blog post. And the GitHub's account name is used for this blog post. So make sure you set your name in GitHub account. Some, some peop, sometimes some people have really weird name listed here. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you do that. OK, so to conclude this presentation, the setup is really, really hard. And communi communi communicating with others is an important factor to successfully contribute to Kotlin project. And finally, have a nice contribution. Uh, can I take a picture of me and you guys? Because <laughs> I want to <laughs> I, I take a picture of future contributors. Can I? Good. And if you guys don't want me a photo, then make, just face, <laughs> hide your face. OK? Here we go. Uh, this side, then. How about this side? No, no, not yet. <laughs> Wait. Here we go. One, two, three. Woo. One more. How did this? One, two, three. Yay. This side. How can I do this? One, two, three. Woo. No me. One, two, three. I can't do this. One, two, three. OK. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, I really appreciate it. Do you guys have any questions? Uh, I'm, since I'm not good at English, so maybe yes or no question would be great. <laughs> Like start with start from do. Do you? <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> uh, 
so you were covering how to contribute to uh, IDEA. I'm wondering, is it possible to create these plugins uh, to be installed locally? For example, if you wanted to uh, create inspections just for your company's code base? Uh, I guess no. Okay. <laughs> I've never tried, sorry, but you can test it in the uh, child IDEA yeah, and send pull request because that's going to be useful for you, you can. Oh, really? The okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, so you mostly covered uh, the plugin inspections. Mm -hmm. uh, what about issues where and it's with like the compiler um, or um, yeah, modifications of the compiler, like adding properties or, or modification of code. That's a good question. Uh, there is an uh, issue in the uh, u truck in compilers or some kind of stuff, but not, not much, not lots of, um, most external contributors are mainly working on Kotlin plugins. So I first start with uh, Start start with contribu uh, contributing Kotlin plugin, and but if you understand how to do it, you can do you can contribute to Kotlin languages or Kotlin JS because there is only one repository called Kotlin. Does it make sense? <laughs> okay, good. Um, so, a quick question. Um, to, for the first thing, I, I noticed that they switched the build system from Ant completely to actually using Gradle as well, and that's that's a good thing because I was using it in just Gradle, it just Ant, and that was painful. So uh, the addition of Gradle is great. Um, do you know uh, if there is a location in the repository or somewhere else that's external that documents well how to do some of the more complex things like? Uh, others working on other parts of the uh, other components of the compiler or is it mostly just look through the code and try to figure it out or is there a location where some of this documentation lives that's public document well uh, well uh, I mean yeah I understand what your question is and I s said document well uh, is there any documentation for any of the coding? I don't see anything okay that's my question that's my answer and I really want to have the, the documentation. And that's why I, I do this presentation. So that, so that lots of, like, maybe hundreds of contributors is showing up. So. <laughs> Anyone? Good. Uh, good? OK. Uh, just made, uh, sorry, uh, this may be out of topic, but I just made a blog post about how to contribute Kotlin in Japanese in 2016. And now some developers in Japan create a working group called Moku Moku Kotlin Contribute JP. <laughs> they try to contribute Kotlin as a team. I feel so good. I really feel so good. And I hope this can happen in other places, like Jap US or Europe. And if you had a, uh, after this talk, I'm going to post this slide. And there's additional information for uh, three main, uh, three frequently asked features, intention, inspection, and quick fix. And here is a description and what file you have to add. And this is the inspections for it. I'm going to go through and quick fix for the description. And here's a list of quick fix you have to Got it. Cool. So you can check that. Thanks a lot. <laughs>